Welcome back. We are now moving to chapter 19, Business 101, chapter 19, using securities markets for financing investing, online with Professor Joe Lane, Delta Community College's newest online professor. Oh, okay. Uh, chapter 19, I almost could call it chapter 18 continued. Uh, and, and what we're going to pick up here are some things that we really introduced in chapter 18. We just want to talk a little bit more about them in chapter, in chapter 19. So this should be a relatively short chapter if I don't get off on a relatively long tangent and see how we, uh, see how we can do with this. Okay, let's go back to chapter 18. I know you're excited about that, but not for just for a minute. In chapter 18, we finished up the chapter talking about long-term financing. When businesses need long-term finances to meet certain goals and objectives they have. A new building, some more expensive equipment, a new plant, some big stuff. Okay. And we said there's really two ways that you can do long-term financing. You can do debt financing through selling bonds or borrowing from a lending institution. Okay, well this is pretty simple. You go to a bank, you go somewhere and you borrow the money. The other way you get it is through bonds. Well, bonds we want to talk about a little bit. Kind of what are bonds? You know, but kind of what are bonds all about? Then we talked about the other way that you can do it uh, is equity financing. This is ownership financing. You're selling ownership. And we said you can do equity financing one of several ways Probably the most, by far, the most common way you do it is through selling stock. Selling stock or selling ownership. And so we talked about, we'll talk about that in chapter 19. So, I, I think for right now, I'll leave these two things up here because this is pretty much what we are going to be, uh, be dealing with in chapter 19. Let me put stock here. All right. So let's go to chapter 19. Looking at my beautifully prepared handout. By the way, chapter 19 is pretty short. That's a good thing, huh? Here's how I started off. Now this long-term financing with debt, debt and equity, where do you go? Okay, now we've already said if you're gonna, if you're gonna use retained earnings as equity financing, taking money out of the bank, you just take it out of the, the bank that you've accumulated with the company, you just do that. Uh, or you can go to a, 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 a financial or lending institution like a bank and you can borrow the money. But a lot of times, <laughs> that's not gonna be, you don't have the money in the bank or the lending institution might be charging you too much interest or whatever to get that money. So the way we're gonna concentrate here is, <clears throat> you know, where do you go <coughs> Excuse me. You go to the securities market. If you want to buy groceries, you go to the grocery store. If you want to buy pharmaceutical items, you go to the pharmacy. If you want to buy or sell, in this case, bonds, or you want to sell stock, because you've determined, do I want to in my company to get this long-term financing? Do I, want to issue, do I want to issue debt? Do I want to go into debt and have to pay it back, or do I want to sell shares of ownership? So where do you go? You go to the securities market. Now I know you've heard of New York Stock Exchange, American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ. That's, <clears throat> the New York Stock Exchange is in New York on Wall Street. But the, the members of the exchange, A.G. Edwards, Charles Schwab, a, a number of really huge businesses that sit on the exchange, they're members of the exchange. Do they have branches all over the United States? Well, the answer is yes. So if you want to do business with Wall Street, if you want to do business with the securities market, you don't have to go to New York. 
or you don't have to go to Atlanta. Uh, you can do it very close to your home at one of the local branches. All right, so at least we know now when we get where, where the, the, uh, the security exchange is where you go to sell stocks and bonds. All right, now I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change who you are several times during chapter, chapter 19. Businesses are selling bonds. We'll start off with bonds. This business decided to do debt financing and they decided to do it through selling of bonds. So right now you are the business. You're the business. You're trying to sell bonds. Now, by the way, you've heard of United States savings bonds. I'm sure you probably have. United States savings bonds, United States savings, are sold by the United States government. What for? To raise money. To raise money. You, know, you have to pay them back. You have to pay these bonds back with interest. Okay. So let's talk about debt financing, long-term financing through debt by selling bonds. So we go to the securities market. It's debt financing. You gotta pay it back with what? Interest. Because nobody is gonna buy a bond of yours if you don't give them some reason to buy it. And giving them some reason, that's interest. Okay, uh, let's look at this bond here. This is the ABC Company General Obligation Bond. This is a $10,000 bond. Now you say, well, wait a minute. I thought the company needed $50 million. So why don't they just issue a $50 million bond? Well, there's not a lot of folks that are gonna go out and invest, even if they have the money, because who buys bonds? Uh, individuals buy bonds, other companies buy bonds, uh, insurance companies can buy bonds with the money, the, the premiums they receive, they get that money and they invest that money. Uh, Louisiana Teacher Retirement System buys bonds, one of the ways that they try to grow their, their funds. Okay, so if that's the case, you're incurring debt and a number of different folks can buy bonds. But most people either don't have the funds to buy $50 million worth or they don't want to put that much in a one particular bond. So what do you do? Instead of selling a $50 million bond, you break it down into smaller denominations and sell a bunch of them that would total $50 million. That makes sense? Okay, so let's do this. This is a $10,000, excuse me, a general obligation bond. That just simply means that the company is pledging itself again, you know, for the, to, to repay these bonds. These bonds are, it's a $10,000 bond. It's payable in April of 2040, huh? So this is a 20-year bond. If you buy this bond, this bond can be cashed in 20 years. It's a 20-year bond. And it's paying 4.25%. You know, just, just as a side note, that's pretty good right now. All right. But it's paying four. So that means if you buy, you know, if they sell this bond, the company sells this bond, they're going to get $10,000. And they're going to keep getting $10,000 until they sell $50 million worth of bonds. And so they're doing that for some type of capital investment. Now, now let's pretend you're the buyer. Remember, you can't sell a bond until somebody buys the bond. Who buys bonds? We've already talked about that. Could you buy a bond? Sure. You may already have some bonds. So this is a $10,000 bond paying 4.25% interest. Hey, that's pretty good. I think I'd like to, think I'd like to have that bond. I might buy several of those bonds. Let's talk about a couple other things about bonds. Do, you have to, do I have to wait the whole 20 years to get my bond plus the interest? No. It's going to be 20 years before it matures, before the $10,000 has to be paid. But, but attached to most bonds are little coupons. And that's what they're called, C-O-U bond, B-O-N, coupons. And they're usually six months. Every six months you can redeem that coupon or turn it in and you can get the interest on that bond for that six months. Does that make sense? So you get the interest periodically over the life of the bond. All right, okay. So you don't have to wait till the, uh, you don't have to wait till the end. 
let me move that so I have a couple more things about about bonds. Uh, Twenty year bonds. What if what if the company goes belly up? If I lost my money, well, possibly. But you know, which means you need to be careful in, in companies that you invest in. However, here's something else to consider. Bonds are, are a pretty safe investment because let's say if a, a company goes belly up, are they going to have the assets of that company sold off to pay the creditors? Now, if, if you sell off the assets of a company, is it going to be able? Is it going to pay off every creditor that's out there that that company owes money to? Probably not, because if it could, you probably wouldn't have gone belly up in the first place. But when it comes to paying off people that the, the company owed money to, bond owners are right up there at the front of the line. They pretty much are the first one of the first ones to get their money. So bonds are pretty doggone safe investments. Okay. So that's how business can 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 uh, can finance by selling bonds. But again, they have to buy them. Now, I just they have to. Somebody has to buy them. I just want to mention one other thing about bonds. You can get your bonds rated, and I mentioned that. I just I just kind of threw that in here. I think under bonds, I just put rating. Uh, oh, I, you know what? I did not I did not define what a bond was. I guess I better do that. Also, I noticed up here, I'd be familiar with what a securities market is. Securities market is a place where people go to buy or sell securities, stocks and bonds. A bond is a corporate certificate. Here's a corporate certificate indicating that a person has lent money to the firm. It's a, a bond is an IOU. You give me the money and I promise to pay you back. Your money plus interest. Legal document. Okay. That's what a bond is. It's debt. You've incurred debt. Why does a person buy a bond? For an investment. It's a way that they can take some of their money and make more money with it by that interest. Let's go back to this rating thing. You can get your bonds rated. There's two companies, Moody's and Standard & Poor's, which probably you don't care about knowing. But here's what happens. Let's say the ABC company was trying to sell bonds. Have you ever heard of the ABC company? Well, I ain't either. I don't know the ABC. Where, where are they located? They're located in Idaho. Idaho? I've never been to Idaho. So, you know, I don't know whether I want to buy these $10,000 worth of bonds or not. But if you're the ABC company in Idaho, do you realize that a lot of people may not buy your bonds because they don't know who the heck you are? But what if you could get a report card on your bonds? What if somebody very, very reputable said these bonds are good? Then you say, oh, hey, if they say those bonds are good, I'll be willing to buy some. Moody's and Standard & Poor's are both two companies out of New York. What they do is they rate bonds. They give bonds a report card, you know, like ABCDF. They use a slightly different rating system, but, but they, they, rate, they rate bonds. If you are not very well known, and yet you're a really a good company, you're a good financially strong company, you would want to get your bonds rated. Now, if you're trying to sell bonds, and you're the Joe Lane Shady Deal Company, and you're not sure you're going to last long enough to get the money, you probably not, better not try to get yourself rated because you're going to look really bad in a rating. You're going to look like a junk bond. Okay, So don't get your bonds rated unless you're, you know, you've got you've got good standing. So you get your bonds. They check everything out about the ABC company. They check their financials. Are there any liens against the company? Are there any lawsuits against the company? Uh, they go way back. They really, really, really study this company. And based upon that study in that company, they give that bond, they give that company a certain rating. Uh, you don't. Ratings are not important, but but there's a rating called a B AA one. When I was in the school system, uh, that was a rating that we always tried to get with our bonds. That's a pretty doggone high rating. Uh, ratings go up as high as AAA, but AAA is usually only the federal government can get a AAA. A B AA one is a good rating. So if you get a B AA one rating, that's that says, hey, I'm a pretty strong company. 
So I can, I can sell my bonds at a lower percent. Now let me give you an example. I've decided, let's, let's change this a little bit. I've got a really good rating. People know I'm a good, a good company. So I'm going to sell my bonds for 3.75%. I can kind of lower my interest rate because I'm a really good company. Let's say I got a, let's say I got a C rating. That's not good. Well, that says this is not a particularly good company. So if, if I'm going to try to entice anybody to buy my bonds, I may have to give a pretty doggone good interest rate just to get them to buy. So, from a business's point of view, the lower the interest rate that you can sell your bonds for, the less interest you have to pay out to the people who buy them. So the higher the rating you get, the lower the interest rate that you have to offer. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Okay. So that's, I think that's, that's bonds. I'd be familiar with the fact, I'd be familiar with rating bonds. I'd be familiar when it comes to rating bonds that the higher the rating, the lower the interest rate you have to you have to pay on your bond. And I'd be familiar with what a bond is, and I'd be familiar with what a securities market is. Speaking of these markets, <coughs> these securities markets, let me do this while I'm thinking about it. New York Stock Exchange, American Stock Exchange, Atlanta Stock Exchange, Chicago Stock Exchange, Dallas Stock Exchange. Do you think there's a lot of money that goes through these exchanges? You think there's a lot of money that goes through Wall Street? I like to use the term gazillions. There's lots and lots and lots of money. Okay. Could it be that anybody might want to cheat? Do something a little bit illegal or underhanded? It's possible. It's possible. So you've got to have some police. You've got to have some police that regulate the, uh, the, the securities market. These, and they also call them security market security exchanges. There's got to be some folks that, who polices the securities exchanges? Here's who does it. The SEC. Now, if you're an avid football fan, that is not the Southeastern Conference. LSU and Alabama and those folks, Georgia, they do not regulate the securities exchanges and securities markets. This is for, known as, this is the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, appointed uh, federally. The chairman is appointed, I think, by the president. The Securities and Exchange Commission, a federal organization, they oversee the exchanges and they can bring prosecution against those that try to cheat, so to speak. You know? Okay, so we're, I'd be familiar with who the Securities and Exchange Commission is. All right, let's do, let's do stocks. Now here's an XYZ company, common stock, $20 par value. What does $20 par value mean? Absolutely nothing. It's just the value that they put it on the books. Just the value. So, but they decide, this company decides to go to the securities exchange, the securities market, and offer these stocks for people to buy. It's kind of the same situation. Before you can sell a stock, somebody's got to buy it. Am I going to buy a stock in a really, really bad company? Most of the times, no, unless I think it's going to rebound. So when you go to the securities exchange, what are you going to get for your stock? How much, is it, how much is, are you going to get for each year that you sell? I don't know. Remember supply and demand? Depends on the demand for your stock when it hits the market. What people are going to be willing to pay for it. But here's the thing. You can sell, what you're trying to do is sell enough of this stock, in this case, for your $50 million expansion. Now there's a huge, 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 huge difference here. You are selling, as a company, we've talked about it, ownership. Okay, let's say I go out. We talked about this, I think, in chapter, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 18. Let's say I go out and buy a thousand shares of CenturyLink stock. And my and now an owner of CenturyLink, yep, I, own part of CenturyLink. How many shares of CenturyLink stock are outstanding? I don't know. Millions. Pretty sure of that. Millions. So am I a big time player at CenturyLink? Are they going to call me up, Jeff Story, who's the CEO of CenturyLink, is he going to call me up and say, Joe, what do you think about this? Nope. Nope, he's not. 
So why would I buy stock in a company? Well, I buy stock in a company because I want to make money with my money. Just like why would I, I'm, I'm investing in stock <clears throat> just like I might invest in bonds. Companies may sell bonds to raise money, that's debt, or they may sell stock, that's ownership. Now here, here drum, drum, drum roll. Here's the big difference, big difference. If you buy a $10,000 bond in a company, are you gonna get your $10,000 back? Yep, it's debt. They owe it to you, legally. Are you gonna get interest on it? Yep, you are. They owe it to you, legally. When you buy stock in a company, what are you guaranteed to get back? Nothing. Nothing. You're an owner. You're not guaranteed to get back anything. But, but I want my... You're invested, you're a part owner now. That's the difference. In a, in a, in a bond, they've got to pay the bondholder back. In a stock, the company does not owe the person anything because they bought ownership. So the question then comes real quickly, so how the heck do I make money with a stock? I'll do it real fast for you. Some of you probably already know. I buy, I buy the stock at $20 a share. I sell the stock at $30. I bought one share of stock to make this easy. I made $10. That's a capital gain. So, one way you can make money with stock, buy it low, sell it high. Is it guaranteed to go up? Nope. Could it go down? Yes. Could I lose money? Yep. You could have a capital loss instead of a capital gain. Which is riskier, a stock or a bond? Say stock. Is it too risky to buy? No, I don't think. It depends on the stock and it depends on you. Uh, but there's more risk in a stock than there is a bond. Which one is there the opportunity to make the most money? A stock. As the opportunity investment opportunity to make more go, the risk goes up. But let me talk about the other way, the other way that uh, you can make money with the stock. Let's say the XYZ company makes a lot of money one year, and they take part of that money, profit, they take part of that money, and like we've talked about, and they put that money in the bank. Now, if you're a smart CEO of a company, and you've got a bunch of stockholders, a bunch of owners, would it be a good idea to pay, give them something since you've had a really good year? Because, you know, if you don't, the stockholders can, through the board of directors, remove you from your, your position. So here's what, here's what uh, companies do. If they've had a really, they don't have to, but a lot of times what they'll do, let's say this company made $100 million in profit. They take $50 million and they put it in the bank. They take the other 50 million and they pay it out to their stockholders. And here's how they'll do that. They'll say, okay, we have 25 million shares of stock outstanding. We've got $50 million that we're gonna pay out. So for every share of stock you have, you get $2. This is called the dividend. So if I have one, I didn't sell my share, I kept my $20 share, I kept my $20 share, and I got a check for $2. Hmm. I got a 10% return on my investment, didn't I? 10% of $20 is $2. So how can you make money with a stock? You can make it through Buying it low, selling it high, that's a capital gain, but there's no guarantees. Or you can make money when a company declares a dividend and pays out a part of its profit to the, uh, to the uh, stockholders, the owners. Are either one of those guaranteed? No, they're not.
But a lot of companies, you know, if you, if you study the market, you get to know a lot of companies that regularly pay out dividends regularly paying out dividends. So if you want to buy a stock where you're thinking, hey, I may get some pretty good dividends, you buy that kind of stock. If you say, hey, I want to buy a stock that I think may go up pretty fast, and I can make some money, a capital gain, you might buy some somewhat different stock. Okay. So I'd be, uh, I'd be familiar with, uh, I'd be familiar with the Securities Exchange uh, Commission is. I'd also be, I'd be familiar with what stock is. Stock is, is uh, shares of ownership in a company. Uh, be familiar with what a dividend is. It's the amount of money paid out to, uh, to the shareholders from the profits of the company. Okay, the last probably couple of things in this chapter, we talked about the way to make money, you know, big time with the stock is through capital gains. If you, can, if you can buy it at, a, at one price and sell it at a higher price, that'd be nice. Uh, I've got a good friend in, in Georgia. I was talking to him uh, this week, and there was a particular stock that he had looked at, and he really, really felt like that stock was going to go up. So he bought some shares of that stock. The stock was selling about $99 a share. Uh, this was several, several, several weeks ago. The stock was already up to about 140 so that was a good investment. I wish I'd have done the same thing. Okay, not going to tell you what company it is. I don't. I don't do. I don't do investment uh, uh, analysis or whatever you want to call it. Recommendations. That, that probably the stock would go down and you'd be out 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 to get me. Okay, let's look at this. The stock market. Uh, 1980, 90, 2000, 2000. 2020. What's the, the the stock the stock market? What's it done over the last 40 or 50 years? The stock market has risen over the last 40 or 50 years, but it hasn't risen like that. The stock market goes like this. It, it it's risen, but it's risen. So these are it doesn't matter. These are called bull markets. This is when the market is really rising, doing good. Uh oh, bad time right here. I'm not sure we're in we're in 2020 right now. We know what's happening to the economy right now. I don't know how low. We're certainly going to go into a bear market. Not something you need to know about I mean, as far as that is concerned. But but what happens is the market goes like this. So you got to you know what you want to do if you can buy low and sell high. That's when you can really do a good bit of capital gains. I sure would like to know how the market's going to go. I wonder how the market's going to be moving. Well, there's something called the Dow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. What did I put in here about the Dow? I just wrote that down, Dow Jones Industrial Average. The only thing that, that uh, and I, that was all. But here's what the Dow is. They have taken 30, what we'll call blue chip stocks, really, really good stocks, and they, they plot the course of those stocks. They say these 30 stocks, what are these stocks doing now? Are they, you know, let's let's track them. Let's track them to see what they are doing. And based upon these, we can do an estimate of what other stocks are going to do. Now is this a perfect way with millions of stocks out there? Does that mean every stock is going to going to travel like these 30 blue chippers? No. But the Dow gives an indication of what it looks like the market's going to do. I'd be familiar with the Dow. The last couple of things that I would mention in here would be this. I guess about, about three things. If you really want to be interested in doing stocks, now you can study it, study it, study it, study it, and go on your own and do it. You might want to consider going with one of these companies, Charles Schwab, A.G. Edwards, uh, Merrill Lynch, somebody, and use a stock broker. These are people that simply that simply help you as an investor invest in the way that best reaches your investment goals and everything. One of the big things, now what can you invest in? You can invest in stocks, you can invest in bonds, you can invest in T-bills, you can invest in mutual funds. 
Now, we're not getting all into these. Uh, get into Business 140, Personal Financial Planning with me. We'll talk more about it. Uh, you can invest in commodities. There's a number of different ways that you can invest. Most stockbrokers will tell you this. The most important thing for you to do when you're doing your investing is diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oh, you can also, this is not exactly on the market, you can also invest in real estate. There's a number of different ways that you can invest. And so I would be familiar with, as already mentioned, I'd be familiar with what a stockbroker is. Uh, I'd be familiar with what the Dow is. And I'd be familiar with this. If you want to do some investing, if investing is of interest to you, I don't have a huge amount of in interest in investing. Uh, I, I had a little more at one time. And we invested in mutual funds, but again, that's, a, that's another thing for another day. But if you're really interested in, like, in, in investing, a great thing to keep consider is diversification. Diversify your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Buy different types of stocks, buy maybe some bonds, buy different things depending on what your, your financial goals are, your investment goals are. Okay, that is chapter 19. Uh, We've talked about bonds, we've talked about stocks, I think we've talked about the things that you need to be, uh, you need to be uh, familiar with. I don't think I had any no items in chapter 19. We made it through that one. We're, hey, we're rolling here. We, uh, we don't have a chapter 20 and bonus chapter D as in dog to be finished with the chapters for, uh, for test number four or for the final. All right. So, I think what we need to do is probably wrap this one up. You know the way I have to do that. I have to do a loud noise. So you can shout uh, at the same time I clap my hands. And we will be done with Chapter 19's on security markets, uh, financing, and investing. And I will see you in Chapter 20. Thank you.